Welcome to this third part and the last part of the interpretation of Alien, the project to find the meaning of the Alien movie of 1978. So in the first part, we have talked about the big picture, the global overview, and uh, the meaning of the story in its whole. In the second part, we have talked about characters and repetitions. And what we said is that all the death of the characters, all the attacks, are the repetition of the same event. And if you put all this repetition next to each other, you can find the story behind each of them and you can find the meaning of these repetitions. And more specifically, we have talked about the two repetition sequences, the repetition of uh, Ripley and the repetition of Kane, because they are very detailed, they are very close to each other, though the repetition of Kane is a little bit more abstract. So just to, to finalize this uh, comparison between Kane and Ripley, just uh, to show you how the protagonist experiences the repressed event. So what I have said is that there is uh, the protagonist is composed of the different characters in the story. And we have two facets of the protagonist. We have the facet as Kane and the facet as Ripley. So how do they, what is the difference between these two events, these two representation? So we will uh, compare Ripley and Kane uh, on three levels. First level is how each character represents the event. What are the emotions linked to the event and the, the, the feeling of belonging? Does this event belong to me? So talking about Kane, the representation is in mode of amnesia. So Kane can't remember the event. When he wakes up, he has no memory of what happened. Emotion linked to the event, it is anesthesia. I remember it, but I don't suffer. If you remember, during all the time that the face hugger has assaulted Kane, Kane was lying down on a table, unconscious, and apparently was not showing any feeling of pain. So there is emotional anesthesia. Then how, how does this event belong to Kane? Well, Kane experiences feeling of depersonalization, derealization, and flashback. The flashback being uh, represented by the rapid and furtive assault of the face hugger. And the derealization and depersonalization is the fact that uh, Kane is a little bit dissociated and he, he externalizes his pain outside of him. So this is how Kane uh, lives the relives the, the event and on comparison we have replay and with replay it is worse while Kane had no representation of the event because he was suffering from amnesia replay has an over representation of the event we must understand that all the people who die throughout the movie are representation of the same event it is replay with representing it and the memory is over present. It's invading. Emotion linked to the event. Well, here we have replay with reliving the event. And what are the, what is the meaning of reliving, reliving the event? It is not remembering. When you remember something, a memory from the past, there is a distance between you and the memory. Even if the memory was painful, you relive it with the safety of all the years or months or whatever between you and the event. But in the case of replay, when she is reliving the event, she is reliving it with the, the, the emotions at the time of the event occurred. So uh, it is very difficult for her to replay all these uh, events because she has the same physical sensations, she has the same pain as was at the beginning. And what does it belong to me? 
uh, replay uh, as uh, suffers from dissociation like cane but it is a, a different level of dissociation it's a little bit worse than cane because she f she has feelings of persecution the trauma is everywhere the monster kills everybody it is invading everything it is overwhelming uh, replay so it's a big difference between Kane and, and Ripley. So here what we see when we compare the two protagonists, we see that it's a dissociation that comes that starts very badly and that that is evolving to something worse. So it's not an improvement over the, the course of the movie, but on the opposite, it's something uh, that is going worse. Okay, so if after part two, we have recomposed the um, characters and we said there is one antagonist that is represented in the movie by the face hugger and Ash, which is a way to say that these two characters are equivalent. They represent the same antagonist. Mother, well, mother is, is it's not clear where she is. It depends on the interpretation we, we decide. It could be a part of the antagonist or not. And the protagonist, as we said in part two, the protagonist is composed of the six human crew members plus the cat. So now it's time to, to decide and to, to, to be more precise, precise about the nature of the traumatic memory that is replayed over and over again in this movie. And here we have two possible interpretations depending on the status of the traumatic memory. The first interpretation uh, is based on the fact that it is a false memory. It is just an affect, a fantasy. Or it can be a real event, a trauma from the past that is resurfacing. Or it can be both. So in the first group of uh, analysis, we will find the Freudian approach. And for Freud and for the Freudian, the, the traumatic memories are false memories. They are something that the mind of the protagonist has invented in, or, in order to overcome a difficult situation. Or it is also linked to uh, the, the, the repressed desires that live within the unconscious of the protagonist. And for the, the other type of interpretation, we will find the theories of trauma, dissociation, attachment theory. Here we could refer a French psychologist called Pierre Janet, who was living at the same time as Freud and was a different approach. Okay, this is a little bit, um, I say it's a, it's a little bit strict because we can find also Freudian who believes in the fact that the event was real, I think of um, Sandor Ferenczi. And on the other side, the trauma is not always related to a single event. It can be related to a, a situation. Okay, so let's go into the Freudian theory. I will not spend too much time with it because it's well known, it has been studied a long time ago. So it is the theory, the interpretation of the castrating mother. So the face hugger and Ash and mother, the, the computer, represent the castrating mother. The, in this interpretation, the face hugger can be re, uh, considered as a spider. And the fact is that it looks like a lot uh, as a spider. And the spider, according to uh, psychoanalysis, is the symbol of the mean mother. This was uh, discovered by Carl Abraham, a disciple of Freud. And uh, it is a mean mother with its hidden penis. And you know that the hidden penis is a recurring theme in Alien. So here's a hidden penis. It was a discovery of uh, Melanie Klein after uh, Felix Bohm. And we can say that the spider represents the fear of the vagina perceived as both dangerous and forbidden. It's a threat. And it's also linked to the tema of the vagina dentata, the vagina that can cut the penis of the child. So it's the castrating mother, the mother who can castrate the child. So this castrating mother 
the child cannot express herself, cannot speak her voice, and it is all the images of suffocation and strangulation. The mother denies the child's individuality. This is the symbol of the face covered that we find several times. And in this interpretation, Ash is the masculine facet of the mother. Okay, now if we talk about the traumatic theory, relieving the real event. So what happened is that the protagonist relieves a real event of the past. It could be a one-time traumatic event like a physical or sexual abuse, or it could be a chronic condition like, for example, physical or emotional neglect or living with a mentally ill or an addicted parent. The protagonist cannot regulate emotions. She is invaded by the parasitic ID that is the result of the trauma. So the trauma is the face hugger, the parasitic ID is the xenomorph. And the, the fact that she cannot regulate emotions, it is the size of the xenomorph that increases over time and the death of people. The protagonist suffers symptoms of dissociative disorders, emotional anesthesia, amnesia, hyperthymesia, which is the opposite of amnesia, flashback and reliving the event, which is obvious in the case of replay. Uh, other troubles, fear, phobia, anxiety, nightmares, fragmentation, disintegration of the self, derealization, depersonalization. So all these troubles are what the protagonist uh, suffers from. But what exactly is a traumatic event? What can we say about what really happened? So what I propose you is to analyze the replay scene. It is uh, the scene in the movie where Ash is attacking Ripley. And it starts in the computer room after she had learned the truth. And she knows that there was a plan. The crew is expendable. Ash and Mother knew about it from the beginning. So what I propose you is that we I show you the, the scene and what I will ask you is to identify in the scene all the symbolic elements and all the weird elements. Whatever you think you find is weird, this will be a key for interpretation. So it's very short, it's a, a few minutes. And uh, after this uh, video, we will uh, discuss the elements. Well, I initially published uh, my video that contained an extract of the movie with a voiceover from my side explaining the different elements. Unfortunately, YouTube has blocked uh, this video two times. So now I will uh, simply publish um, my comments without the, the video and the voiceover. So if you want to, to watch the, the scene before, it is. Uh, it starts with a replay in the computer room where after she learns that there was a secret plan. And it is not exactly the, the scene of attack by Ash. It is something that precedes the attack by Ash. And I included it in the description because it is important that from the point of view of replay, she was the first to attack Ash. So we must understand that the whole scene is viewed from the point of view of replay. And from her point of view, she attacked Ash. She provoked him. This is the meaning of the short scene in the computer room. And after that, she, she goes out of the room. She exits the room and there starts the attack scene by Ash in the place close to the dining room. So unfortunately, uh, sorry for not showing the complete uh, extract, but in the coming, um, um, in the coming uh, minutes, I will explain in detail what happens in this scene. So what I recommend is that you, you pause the video now and you get a copy of Alien and you watch the scene of attack by Ash. Thanks for your attention. See you in a few seconds. OK, 
Okay, so I hope that you have uh, viewed all the elements that are relevant for the analysis. So what I propose is that we start from the beginning. So at the beginning, we have uh, we see that replay is attacking Ash. He is not the initiator of the attack. She attacks him just after she she understood that she was betrayed. And while she attacks him, he doesn't respond uh, with anger or with force. He is pretty de defensive and he looks like he's very surprised by, by what happens. So symbolically, this attack by replay, it means that she has provocated him. What we must understand is that this scene is viewed from the eyes of replay. So from her perception, she was the one who attacked him. So the attack is a symbol of the uh, sexual assault sexual abuse. So she initiated the attack. She feels guilty about uh, provocating him. And you see, he doesn't show anger. He has this uh, weird expression where he feels very vulnerable and he doesn't understand what happens. And she could, we feel that she could uh, very easily beat him. Then after she leaves the place, and she tries to escape, but all the doors are closing as if by magic. And this is another clue, another weird element, because uh, of course we believe with replay, we believe that it is Ash who is closing the doors. But when we retrieve him later on, we see that he is standing still and we cannot imagine how he is closing the door, maybe mentally by psychic activity. And it is important, we will uh, discuss this point later on, to, because it is a clue that will give us, uh, that will uh, let us understand when this thing happened. Then after we have the confrontation, Replay cannot escape, so she tries to discuss with him, she tries to, to rationalize things, but he is completely uh, um, dissociated, he doesn't talk, he doesn't discuss, he is lost in his thoughts. He is cut from his, his um, brain, let's say. And we see here the two uh, liquids, the red and the white liquids that are leaking from the characters. And these are sexual symbols. The red liquid uh, leaking from the woman is a symbol of uh, the periods. And the white liquid is a symbol of the um, semen. Then after there is the, the attack, uh, Ash violently attacks Replay, and there is a big difference of power between them. What we see is that Ash grabs Replay and throws her out in the room as if she were, uh, as if she was a rag doll. She has absolutely no defense against him, which is surprising when you look at the size of the characters. Then after we see this uh, moment where Ash stands still again, and this time Replay is in a state of shock. She is uh, knocked out. She doesn't answer anymore. She is unconscious, and he, he contemplates her, and we don't know what he's thinking about. But what is interesting in this picture is that we see the big round table. This is the table where uh, the xenomorph has, uh, came, uh, came out uh, the body of Cain. And what you see on this table are the tumbler toys, the blue tumbler toys in the shape of birds. And these uh, tumbler, tumbler toys, they mechanically go up and down, up and down, and their beak is uh, going into a glass of water. And we see these tumbler toys at the beginning of the movie, at the very beginning when the crew is still in a state of hibernation. So this table is a central uh, part of the of the movie and the meaning of the tumbler toys uh, again it's uh, related to sexual activities because they are going up and down up, up and down with this long beak and then uh, what happens is that ash throws a replay in another room or what looks like another another room and in this room we have this this weird decoration sets we have uh, something that looks like toy that is coming down from the ceiling and these are 
mobile toys and we don't expect this kind of decoration in a spaceship this kind of decoration is more usual in a human house and more specifically we find this type of decoration in a child house a uh, child room sorry so this is important that we see these mobile tones then another sexual clue on the left we see pictures of naked women which contrast with the toy so we have two uh, symbolic clues we have the, the symbolic the sexual clues and we have the childish clues then after Ash takes a very weird decision, apparently he wants to kill uh, Ripley and what he uses is a paper magazine. He rolls it up into a tube and puts this tube in her throat. Please note that she is unconscious. This shot is the same as the shot of Kane lying unconscious on the table with the tube of the face hugger in his throat. Then we see uh, Ash, okay, there, there is uh, Parker who attacks Ash with a big fire extinguisher, the big red fire extinguisher. This fire extinguisher is a phallic symbol. It represents the strength of the protagonist, its ability to fight, but it is uh, not efficient because Ash is much more, much stronger. And we see the defense of Ash, it's again weird because he, he grasps the chest of uh, Parker and he presses it very uh, strongly and you see the pain that uh, Parker feels and what it means uh, it means that after putting the tube in the throat of the protagonist Ash is grabbing the chest of the protagonist again it's a sexual activity and you can you understand it better if you understand that the whole scene is a sexual uh, scene. After putting the tube in the throat of Replay, he grabs the chest of Parker, but Parker and Replay are the facets of the same character, the same protagonist. And here what we see is just a dissociation of, uh, of what happens. Okay, here we have the fire extinguisher as a weapon and here he is able to, to to beat uh, Ash efficiently. And there is a very uh, interesting behavior of Ash. He turns around in every sense. He spits some liquid. So here again, it's a sexual uh, symbol. The, the, it is a semen. But we will, uh, we will discuss in a few minutes the reason why he turns around in every sense and why he spits the, the liquid. And then finally, uh, the Parker beats Ash so strong that the head detaches from the body and at the end of the scene we see that the, the crew is discussing with Ash they have reactivated Ash and his head is uh, he can talk with his head and the head is detached from the body so what is this scene about we have given a few clues but if you want to understand what it is about uh, the, the important thing to understand is that what we see is the point of view of Ripley. The point of view of the audience is the point of view of Ripley. This is how she relieves the event. This is, no, this is not how the event occurred. So let's, let's summarize. I, I have written it. You can make a pause on the video if you want to read. But I will summarize. What does Ripley believe? Ripley believes she believes that Ash wants to kill her. And she, why does she believe that he wants to, to kill her? Because first he, he beats her very violently. Then after he puts this, this tube that prevents her from breathing properly. So she has good um, reasons to believe that Ash wants to kill her. And also the other reason why she, she thinks that Ash wants to kill her is because she has no better option to propose. She has no better explanation of, of the behavior of Ash. And uh, um, at the end, we see that uh, Parker beats Ash with the fire extinguisher. And we, we have the feeling from the point of view of Ripley, we have the feeling that she was able to stop Ash. We have the feeling that she, at the end, 
her strength was better. And um, at the end, what we see is that there is the body of Ash that is separated from his head and uh, he is dead. And uh, Replay is discussing with the head of Ash and she, she asks the question, uh, how can we beat this Xenomorph? And Ash says it is impossible. And this, this is where she, she understands that there is no other way but to destroy the Nostromo and escaping the Narcissus. Okay. So, Basically, what we said is that this is a point of view of replay. She thinks that she that Ash wanted to kill her, and she believes that she was able to uh, beat Ash in the end. Now, if we look at the same thing, thing scene from the point of view of Ash, it's completely different. So, my uh, what I say is that it is a sexual assault scene. So, the purpose of Ash was not to kill replay. The purpose of Ash was to rape Ripley. So if you review the scene with this point of view of Ash, you have a different understanding of the different elements. So what he, he does, first he beats her very, very violently. It's a well-known method that is used by uh, uh, the guys who rape women. They beat the victim very violently just to submit the victim just to make sure that the victim will not resist because she's in a state of shock and she remains passive. So he does not want to kill her, he just wants to submit her. Then after he rapes her, how does he rape her? First he, he imposes a forced fellatio, then he touches her, her breast. And this hurts her because he's, he's violent. So you see still we are in the, in the rape scene. And then after you see that Ash is turning around very violently, very strangely, like, like, as if he was a madman, and he spits this uh, white liquid. So, you know, it is the climax of the sexual act. At the climax of the sexual act, there is uh, the ejection of the semen, but there is also this, this state of uh, uh, when someone becomes a little bit crazy, where loses a little bit uh, the, the sense of reality, and this is what is uh, symbolically demonstrated in the scene. And, uh, uh, but she thinks that she was the one who beat uh, Ash, because this, this, this is at this time that he is in the climax of the sexual act, and uh, she, she believes that he, she, she, she made him uh, become calm, okay, quiet. But in fact, he became quiet because it is the end of the sexual act. And after he ejaculates, he calms down and returns to normal. He can talk with her as if nothing had happened. And you know, there is this uh, important shot where she talks with the head and the head is separated from the body. What does it mean? The head is where is the reason, is where is the rationality. And the body is where is the pulsion. So when, what it means that when Ash is separated from his pulsion, he can talk normally. He can behave like a, a normal uh, human being. And it is only when he is connected to his body, when he is connected to his pulsion, that he, he, he rapes people. And at the end, uh, she wonders how, what the discussion between Ash and Replay about killing the Xenomorph is uh, introspection. She wonders whether she will be able to solve this trauma. And she understands that it's not possible at the moment. And at the end, we see her in the Narcissus spaceship and she seems uh, lost. Uh, she shows a um, um, dissociative uh, look. She seems lost in her, in her thoughts. And the last picture is a replay in the cocoon, in the self-withdrawal, uh, uh, in the fallback to the narcissistic, uh, to a narcissistic fallback. And what it means, uh, this conclusion, is that the only way that she found to survive is to be even more regressive than at the beginning of the movie. It is something that we have said. 
what I, I didn't mention so far, so in this interpretation, uh, what the movie tells us is that it is a sexual assault that was made by Ash. So the question is, uh, who is Ash? Well, we don't know. Is it a father? Difficult to say, impossible. Probably it is an, an adult, because when you look at Ash, he's a little bit more mature than the other characters in the movie. So probably it is an adult figure. And this uh, traumatic event probably occurred during the childhood because we see several references to the childhood. For example, the fact that the doors closes automatically like by magic, it is a, a, a symbol of the difference of power between adults and childs. And sometimes adults, they, they have, uh, they perform things that look like magic to, to child. Also the other clue, is the the toys in the in the room as we said and the last clue in the scene is the difference of strength between the two uh, characters ash is very strong and it is a dif difference that is understandable if you consider that replay was a, a, a child at the time of the event another um, Another clue of this uh, theory is uh, the death of Brett. And uh, when you look at the death of Brett, is very little compared to the tall xenomorph. And it gives, again, a clue of the time of the event. Uh, because as I said earlier, when someone is reliving the event in the sense of traumatic event, it, the, the person is reliving the event with the same intensity and the same level of maturity as when the event initially occurred. So this is the, the end of this interpretation of Alien. I hope you have enjoyed this discussion. Again, I've, I'm sorry for my uh, poor English and I hope that you, you didn't miss too many elements. So if you want more precision or if you want simply to give uh, your opinion about this interpretation, please leave a comment. I read all comments and I'm always very interested to, to get your point of view. Thanks again for your attention and uh, I hope to see you soon for another interpretation.